my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today I'm going to be making a little pocket-sized snack called a flying saucer that comes from Hawaii, more specifically from Kauai, which is one of the smaller of the main islands. Hawaii in general is a beautiful place, beautiful people, beautiful food and culture. And I got some wonderful recommendations from lovely Glenn who is from Kauai. So gave me all kinds of wonderful tips of places to eat and sent me this beautiful toast type, which is a replica of one that was made in the 1950s, I'm guessing maybe even earlier, 1940s. And it is a toasted sandwich maker. And this is what it looks like. It's really, really simple. This is reproduction, but looks just like the original. It is just a sandwich maker. And you can make this over coals, you can make this over electric stove, gas stove, which is what I'll be using today. And it is very solidly built and I cannot wait to use it. So in Kauai, these sandwiches are called flying saucers because they look a lot like flying saucers. They're made of two pieces of white bread, usually loves white bread, and inside has a mixture of ground meat that some people say is kind of similar to a sloppy joe mix, and then a slice of American cheese is inside. Flying saucers are a popular fair food, but they are most popular doing obon, or as it's known in Kauai, bon. It was brought to Hawaii by Japanese plantation workers, and it's a celebration that happens in the summertime to commemorate and celebrate family members that have passed away. There are specific foods that are eaten, gravestones are cleaned and visited, and it's a time of merriment. People wear their yukata, which are their summer kimonos, and eat wonderful foods. And in Kauai, that includes the flying saucer. So the version that comes from Kauai apparently is more like a sloppy joe mix. Other islands like Maui and Oahu have flying saucers as well and they often contain corn. So I found a few recipes, not too many, and I'm going to go with the one that does not contain any corn. Although when I asked Glenn about what he normally has in his, he says oftentimes people add whatever they want inside of their flying saucers. He encouraged me to make it my own and put things that I enjoy inside it. But I really want to have the flying saucer experience as close as I can to the original. I will return to Hawaii. I really, really enjoyed it, as did my family. And someday I will go to Kauai myself and go during Bon so I can have one of these myself. But until then, we'll be making them at home. So let's go ahead and get started. So the toast type also came with some pamphlets, which I thought was really nice. These also look like reproductions. And I imagine these were included in the original toast type version. Look at this. It has a couple recipes and suggestions. So we're going to season this just like we would season a cast iron pan using a little bit of oil and some low heat. That will help with the sticking. Big thanks to Glenn for very kindly introducing me to the flying saucer and for sending me this beautiful little gadget. So let's go ahead and make the filling before we make our flying saucer. I'm going to preheat my pan here on medium heat and add some oil to it. And we're going to brown up some ground recipe calls for beef, but I happen to have ground turkey, and because Glenn said I could make this recipe my own, I am going to use ground turkey. Now I know some of you may come after me saying you should be using beef. I should be, but I happen to have turkey on hand, and my family and I love turkey, so that's what I'm going to be using. Now we're going to heat up some oil in a pan, and I've got my ground turkey. So in goes my meat. This is one pound. And I'm going to be using yet another gadget. And this gadget was very kindly sent to me by lovely Brian. Brian, thanks so much for sending this to me. This is specifically for when you are browning ground meats. It kind of looks like something you find up the end of a boat. But you just do this to break up the meat. It works great. A little twisting action helps to break up all the clumps. Brian? It is getting a little bit stuck in the crevices of the tool. But it's doing a good job chopping everything right in the pan and getting nice crumbly meat as opposed to having some big chunks. So we're just gonna cook that so everything gets nice and kind of gray. Okay, 
while that continues to do its little thing, I'm gonna put the cover on it, kind of reduce it to a low, we're gonna make the sauce. So I chose this recipe because this one uses manwich, and this is a sloppy joe sauce. Original manwich. I have never had a sloppy joe in my entire life, and I've always seen this on the shelves near the chili and wondered what it tastes like. So I'm gonna be using it. This is a sloppy joe sauce has tomato puree and some other things like green and red bell peppers and chili powder and some salt, sugar, carrot fiber. Interesting. So I always want to try this. I'm going to use this and then we're going to kind of zhuzh it up with some other ingredients. So let's open this can of sauce. Okay. Oh, look at that. It smells tomato based. Tomato y, a little bit of sweetness, some kind of spice. Hmm, it's redder than I thought it'd be. Add that to my bowl. And to that, we're going to add some Worcestershire sauce. Bloop, bloop, bloop. That'll give it some tanginess. And something, something that Worcestershire sauce does. Brown sugar, a little bit of sweetness, some ketchup. Loop. And I will put the link to this original recipe down in the description box below. And some mustard. Oh, I just got mustard blood. That's unfortunate. All right, here, let's try that again. Okay, bloop. Get that all out of there. Okay. Bring our meats back and stir all of our sauce ingredients together. Our meat is cooked. Oops, get back into the pan, thank you. I'm gonna crumble it up a little bit more. Oh, it's very squeaky and rubbery. Yes, this does a good job of getting all the meat chopped up. All right, now we're gonna add our sauce. Now we're just gonna mix this in. And that's our filling, just like that. So we'll just let that do its thing and reduce. The recipe says to make this in advance and to allow it to cool so that it will prevent any kind of leaking. But uh, as you can see, I didn't do that. So I'm just gonna let this cook, reduce, and then just let it chill out while I season my toast tight. Okay, let's do it that way because I, I, I didn't make this in advance. I really wanted you to see me make it. So we're gonna let this simmer and we'll come back and, and make, a, make a flying saucer, right? So our sloppy Joe filling is made. Now it is time to assemble the flying saucer. I just seasoned my toast tight with a little bit of vegetable oil and then I toasted it on low heat on both sides to just give it a little bit of a seal, just like you would season a cast iron pan. So it is warmed to the touch so we can make our sandwich. Before we do that, let's prep our bread. So we're gonna be using regular old, plain old, simply boring white bread. In Hawaii, this bread would be loves, but since I can't get any loves, I've just got store white bread. I've got some room temperature butter so that it'll be easy to spread. And we're gonna butter one side of the bread. So this will both add flavor and give us a nice golden sandwich. Now I'm not worrying about the crust too much because these are gonna be trimmed off by the maker. So don't worry about that too much. Grab our toast tight, open that up, and then we're gonna put butter side down. Oh, you can actually fit a good amount in there. Now the recipe says, err on the side of not putting too much filling because you don't want this to ooze out. This is my first time, so we'll just have to see what happens. I've got a slice of American cheese. I'm going to fold it into quarters. And this is enough for four sandwiches. 
place one piece in the middle. Now our filling. I'm putting about, I would say two tablespoons of filling in there. It said not to overfill, but it's so easy to do that. Okay, stop. Now we're gonna take the other piece of bread and put this on top, buttered side up, like that. Now, take this and clamp it over the top, like this. Squeeze and seal. It has a nice little handy dandy loop so that it holds the two sides together and already, look at that, did you see that? It just cut the bread slices the crust off, just like that. I didn't have to do anything. If it didn't cut it off cleanly like mine just did on its own, just like a guillotine, you would use a butter knife and make sure to cut those edges off. Because if you don't and toast it, it will create a little seal around here and then your sandwich will risk sticking on the inside. All right, now we're gonna heat this up. I've got medium heat here and we're just gonna toast this until it's done. You could do this over an electric stove apparently, a campfire, all different situations this thing will work and I think the best way to tell if it's done is just to keep peeking at it from what I've read. Look, it fits very nicely on this stove. Oh, I can hear some sizzling. I can see some sizzling. That must be the butter. Oh, it's on that side. Oh, please don't stick. Oh, yes. Oh, look, it's already doing its thing. It didn't stick either. I'm so excited. We also have a campfire version of these toast tights. I forget who manufactures them, but they're cast iron and the handles are much longer. So my family and I take them with us when we go camping. We should get a couple more. We only have two. So you can make two sandwiches at once, but it's great because the handles are so much longer. You can reach into a fire without getting too close to the fire. It's a really fun way to cook. So I can hear sizzling. I'm gonna take another peek. Oh my gosh, look, already it's turning brown. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, this is, about, this is gonna be ready. I'm gonna get a plate. Oh my goodness. Filling, of course, is already cooked. We're just looking for a golden brown crust and OMG, yeah. <gasps> look, that side's perfect. Okay, that side's perfect. I'm gonna get this side perfect. And it smells lovely in here like toasted buttered bread. Oh my gosh, it's doing such a beautiful job. Yay, look at that. <gasps> okay, that side's perfect. Don't need to heat that one up anymore. This one maybe just a couple more seconds. Glenn, this is turning out great. Yo, yo, okay. I don't know why I'm whispering, but I'm excited. A couple, 10 more seconds. Yes, done. Oh my gosh, that was so easy. Look, it's so perfect. This looks gorgeous. I can imagine Uncrustables being made in this without even being toasted, just because it seals so nicely. <sighs> winner, winner. I know I haven't even tasted the results, but the function of that is just so great. Look how perfect that is. Sealed all the way around the edges. Look at that. And it looks like a flying saucer. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Look. I love it. It's so perfect. Ooh. Look. It's so beautiful. With those little circles on top. Perfectly toasted. Look at that edge. Alrighty, my lovelies, look at this beautiful flying saucer. It is so perfect. The edges are crispy. This is my very first one. First time I've ever used my toast eye and it came out perfectly. Just like a UFO, what a brilliant name. Now, as I said earlier, Bon or Obon is a time to commemorate and remember family members and loved ones who have since passed. And Glenn recently shared with me that his mother, Catherine, has recently died. And I am so sorry, Glenn, for your family and for you. I express my deepest condolences for her loss, but let us commemorate Catherine and her memory with this beautiful homemade flying saucer. Alrighty, itadakimasu. Mm. 
so good. Did you hear that crispness? The toast type makes a beautiful edge and crust and nothing is leaking out. So if you don't overfill it, it does not leak at all. It makes a beautiful tight seal. See how thin that is? It's beautiful. Let me open it up and show you what's inside. Look. So delectable. Mm -hmm. American cheese is perfect in this. It's melty, it's plasticky, oozy, a little bit like nacho cheese sauce, adds some richness. The filling, I've never had a sloppy joe before, is delicious. It's tangy, you can taste a little bit of the bell peppers in there. And it's got a little bit of something, something spice in there, maybe some cinnamon, nutmeg, that kind of spice, not chili heat at all, but definitely has some pepper flavor to it as well. A little bit like chili, but sweeter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm it's fantastic. So good, hearty, and moist. I know some people don't like that word, but I don't mind it at all. I really love the contrast of that really hot and molten filling with the crisp exterior and the kind of fluffy, buttery, and crunchiness of the outside. It is so good. Just so, so, so good. And I cannot wait to test out all the different permutations of this kind of hand pie. I can imagine sweet ones, Nutella, cinnamon sugar ones, the savory ones like curry, chicken, tuna melt, so many different versions of your favorite sandwiches you could just make into this beautiful, gorgeous, crispy hand pie. So, so good. Mmm, mmm. All righty, Malolis, there you have it, the Kauai Flying Saucer, delectable. Big thanks to Glenn for making this episode happen by sending me this beautiful toast type maker, and thank you, Brian, for sending me the ground meat masher upper. It worked beautifully, and thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Love hearing from you. Like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. <laughs>